are going to be making this twist headband. I will put a photo of me wearing it on here for you guys, but essentially it is a long tube that we twist and then seam together in the back. To start, you're going to want to <clears throat> make sure that you have the yarn you want to use, which I'm using Karen Simply Soft. It's a worsted weight, 100% acrylic yarn. Uh, weight four for all of those of you who don't know what worsted weight is, and it's use is a five millimeter. Um, let's see, five millimeter crochet hook. This is in the colored orchid, and I got this at my local mom and pop shop. They sell it at like Joanne Fabrics. They sell it at Meyer, Walmart, <clears throat> lots and lots of places. Then I just have some waist yarn. This is also Karen Simply Soft. Uh, do not know what color it is, but. It's their darker green, but you're going to want to start and end with waist yarn. So just make sure you have enough to do about five or so rows of waist yarn. To start, you go back to your black needle. Okay. So I just like to leave like a tail, I don't know, about six inches or so long, throw it in the middle, go around the first black hoop. Crank your handle and move it behind the next, in front, behind, in front, and so on and so forth, all the way around. And then you know the first one went in front, so when you get to the very end, your last yarn should go around the back like this right here of that white one when you get to the end, uh, back to the first black one we started with. So go on and Go ahead and cast on. If you watched my bonfire beanie tutorial, I can put a link to that uh, below. But it's the same cast on method we use for that, except for we are starting with waist yarn this time instead of our regular yarn we're using for our headbands. So once I've gotten around, and this one goes behind, I'm going to stick it in the yarn holder. I'm just going to hold it, and I'm going to do about five rows. So once we get to the end of our five rows, uh, I'll show you guys what our next step is. So once we get here, I'm just going to take my scissors, cut my yarn, drop it, I'm going to drop it onto the right of the black hook, set aside my waist yarn, and then I'm going to grab my yarn that I'm using. I like to pull mine from the center because I find that's easiest. Uh, it can be a little tricky to start, but once uh, your skein gets a little bit less full, it gets a little bit easier. So what I like to do is wrap about one, two, three, four, five, six, just a little circle. Um, we're going to use this yarn to sew our edges in later, so that's why I have such a substantially longer tail. If you want me to measure it. Um, it's about 60 inches long um, and that might be like way too much it might be but rather too much than too little and you'll find like your own little methods of measuring out yarn how much you need and also can depend on tension so that's why it's best to just have a little bit more and then going back to our machine you're going to stick it right here next to this green tail onto the right of the black hook. We're going to stick it in our yarn holder. I'm going to hit the reset button to clear it. Now we're just going to crank our Addy like we normally would. And we are going to do 75 rows. So go ahead and crank out 75 rows. And when, once you guys get to row 75, go ahead and stop and I will show you what our next step is. Okay, now we've reached row 75. We're going to take our entire skein of yarn and just Pop it right here in the middle, 
We're gonna leave that to the left of the white hook and to the right of the black hook. And we're gonna take our waist yarn and again, we are going to do about five or so rows of waist yarn. And that again goes to the right of the black hook and to the left of the white hook and just gonna go and do five more rows or more you know it's easier sometimes if you have a little bit more uh, width of waist yarn because it can come unraveled sometimes which makes it really horrible if it's coming unraveled and then you have to go pick up all these stitches of your hat or your headband whatever you're making and it just makes it a little bit more difficult so don't be afraid to do like 10 rows of waist yarn if you want I just wouldn't do any less than five Okay, and then once you've done your five or however many rows of your waist yarn, uh, you're just going to take it out of the yarn holder, throw it into the middle again like you did the other ones, and then you're just gonna crank. And once you've gone all the way around, when you get back to here, you should see all of the stitches begin to fall off of the machine. And so now that we have that, I'm just going to move this. <clears throat> and this is what our headband looks like right now. Um, I just stretch this out. Okay. So if you're wondering about how long this is, when I just pulled that stretched, um, probably about 20 inches or so, because this is 18 right here. 19 to 20 inches, roughly. <clears throat> and it can definitely stretch a lot more than that, but just, you know, naturally stretch without pulling it too taut, about 19 to 20 inches. So, that should fit right around your head. So now, we're going to go back to our starting end right here which is the you know roughly 60 inches of yarn that we left I'm going to this point right here and this is going to be essentially the same step you do on both ends okay I'm using my mermaid hook from Harper Baby Shop Angie makes seriously like really gorgeous hooks this is a size H any like five, 5.5 millimeter, 4.5, four could even work, will be sufficient. So you can see right here, this is like our yarn pulling through and it's pull, when you pull it tight, it pulls this stitch right here tight. So I just like to put my yarn under this loop and this loop. You'll see like, through this waist yarn we have little loops that are sticking up and basically what we're gonna do is that we are closing the end of this tube we're gonna just close it all together so you can do slip stitches or you can do single crochets so now that you've done those two on the end you should be able to have one on this side and one on this side and just match them up and pinch it closed as you go so I'm, I like to just pinch them together. I'm gonna to pick up this stitch and this stitch, yarn over, pull through. Um, like I said, that was a single crochet. You can do just slip stitches. Either way, um, I haven't found one easier or more difficult than the other really. Um, I'm just gonna do single crochets just because that's what I like to do. But basically, now again, if we're just looking at one side, we have this next stitch, we're gonna go through that, and look at the other side, and this is the next stitch. Yarn over, 
pull through again one stitch right here I grab the other side you have one stitch right here I think the hardest part on this is just getting started and basically you can just pick two loops right near each other right where the tail comes out <clears throat> and the reason it's important to start and end on your the same hook is because when we do this part of joining if they didn't end on the same part in the circle on the loom uh, your tube will be closed flat this way and on the other side it'll be might be closed flat that way which is just a mess uh, my boyfriend uh, makes my hats and headbands helps me sometimes with my Addy machine which is one of the great things about Addy machine people who can't knit or crochet can definitely use it but he forgot that he had to start and end on those black hooks and we had a bunch of <sighs> crooked headbands which was just a mess but basically we're going to continue the same thing all the way down so I'm getting near the end here and I just like to stick my fingers and just push those ones up to make it a little bit easier to see you should have two stitches left here at the end that we're going to go into if you have three just do it into the next two and then do one more single crochet or slip stitch into the last hoop just to pick it up sometimes it happens it's, it's okay it's not the end of the world and then as you can see I actually don't even have that much tail left that's why it's important that you leave a really long tail to begin with if you did slip stitches you probably will have a much long longer tail so we're just going to one more slip stitch pull that tight and then the thing with pulling off the waist yarn at the end is that let's see the thing with pulling the waist yarn off at the end is that you can just tug this outside string and it'll pull right off but because of the kind of cast on we did we did the kind that you would cinch like on the bonfire beanie you cinch it closed so basically you have to pull this string that when you pull it tight you can see that's one string running through all those hoops you have to just take your hook or your fingers and just pull that piece of string out of those hoops so that now let me see here now they are workable little loops now they're open loops instead of like right here where there is yarn going through so again we're just going to keep pulling out just pull it tight a little bit so you can see where it's pulling the stitches together and then you can pull it out a lot easier and you just have to do this for the top row because once you get the top row done it the rest will just come unraveled which is awesome because so i see a lot of people who use addy machines will cut out the beginning waist yarn you don't have to you just have to do one row of getting that out and then you are good to go and then i just wrap up my waist yarn so that i can use it again on a future project and then also this is why it shows why it's really important to have contrasting colors for your waist yarn you do not want to use colors that are similar or obviously the same yarn because it would make stitching up the ends nearly impossible well i shouldn't say that it would be possible but it'd be really hard <coughs> okay so this is what one end looks like and we're going to do the same exact thing on the other side except we're going to be using working yarn oh see right here is a perfect example of what happens sometimes if your yarn if you don't have enough rows of waist yarn this stitch just got uh, loose and now I have no yarn in that loop and if somehow that loop got pulled tight I'd be in big trouble because I wouldn't have my loop might drop and I might drop stitches and it would just be a pain so again I'm going to just pick up this loop I'm going to do this one that the yarn is coming from pull it through man I had a hard 
time with that one. There we go. Pull it through. I'm going to pick up the second stitch and the second stitch. We're going to pull it through. And now here's that one that was a little funky. Luckily it was right in the beginning so I could still pick it up easily. But I got that one. And then this next one, again, because this waist yarn started coming out, it makes, makes it a little bit more tricky when you're trying to sew up these ends. And then now, since my waist yarn is intact for the rest of the stitches, it'll make it a little bit easier now that we've gotten those ones out of the way. That's why you have to be really careful that you're not like tugging and pulling around on your waist yarn either. And then we're going to do that all the way across. Let me zoom out a little bit for you guys. And then I will show you what our next step is. Okay my last single crochet there with my last two loops that I picked up I'm just gonna pull my loop out extra long because we want this to remain working yarn we are not going to cut it from our skein we're just going to pull off <coughs> sorry we're gonna pull off this waist yarn that we have So this is what we have right now. You have one basically double layered block. So in order to do this, we are going to take one end, leave this end flat, and take the other end and flip it one time. And that's going to give you the twist in the middle of your headband. Then you're just going to fold it back in half and you're gonna take all these stitches you have and line them up and you can slip stitch these together, you can single crochet these together, you can uh, use a yarn needle and uh, whip stitch or mattress weave or any other kind of stitch that you like to use for seaming. Just make sure it's something that is strong and can withstand people stretching this over their head. So I like to just use my crochet hook. It, gave me the cleanest results uh maybe because i'm not the best with my tapestry needle i don't know very many stitches but feel free to do whatever works best for you and i also go through both loops i'm just gonna slip stitch this one Okay, and then once you've slip stitched or crocheted, single crocheted or whatever stitch you did, <coughs> just cut off your working yarn, set that aside. And I like to just tie the two ends together that I have and then use a yarn needle to weave in my ends and I usually just weave them right into my seams you might have an easier way to do it but I found they just hold pretty well doing them in the seams okay and then you will flip it back. This is what the back of my seam looks like. Depending on what methods you guys decided to use, yours may look a little bit different. But this is your finished headband. Uh, as you can see, it's relatively like pretty quick. 
Uh, you did have to use your crochet skills a little bit there at the end for the last part, but if you're like me and you have some helpers at home, my boyfriend, my mom has actually helped me make a few hats. Um, and now that I've taught her how to use an Addy, she's bought yarn and has little projects of her own that she wants to do. It's so simple. Uh, my mom can crochet a little bit, so she could probably learn how to do this portion of it. I don't know if she has the patience for it, but um, yeah, I think this is a super cute item that you can sell at craft fairs. I've sold uh, quite a few of these at a craft fair I did this fall. Uh, they were a huge hit. I had photos of me wearing them because a lot of people, the first craft show I bought them to, people are like, what are these? How do you, what do you do with them? They just didn't understand how they were worn. So I took pictures of myself. Make sure you use your own pictures, guys. Uh, you, you can't use other people's photos of them wearing their headbands without their permission. I sent some to a couple friends of mine that are locally here and I said I will send you headbands in exchange, you guys take pictures for me and I can use those and my Etsy and craft fairs and they said yep, totally fine. So that's a way to do it if you don't want to take pictures of yourself wearing them. I know some people are like, headbands just don't fit on me right, they don't like them. Like, you know, think about people that you know from high school, people you met in college, people at work family, friends, whatever, that might model your headbands for you. I think that's a great way to do it. But yeah, these sold really well. I would love to see what colors you guys use, what yarns you guys try. I use a lot of Karen Simply Soft. I've used Wool Ease. I've used Vanna's Choice. Um, I've used this Red Heart Amore. And this is really soft. It does make the headbands pretty thin, but it was really, really, really soft, and I know a lot of people liked that yarn as well. Just gives it a different texture, but I hope you guys liked this tutorial. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more Addy tutorials or any crochet tutorials on any of the patterns that I do, definitely stay tuned to this channel. I think I'm going to be making an essentially fall cardigan video tutorial because that is my most requested pattern to have made into a video for beginners since that was the first beginner uh, sweater pattern that I've made so I might be doing that too so you guys just stay tuned if you have any suggestions leave them below any comments concerns anything else you just want to ask me talk to me suggest to me please 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 leave a comment below I really loved hearing from you guys I will try and link all the things I've used I will leave a link to the this hook that I used as well as the yarn my adding machine um, I can probably even look at my cutting mat and other stuff like that for you guys, but uh, tag me on Instagram if you share any of your headbands. I would love to see them. If Sometimes if you guys tag me, I will share your photos on my feed or my stories, so I love interacting with you guys. So yeah, definitely. I hope you love your new headbands. Thanks for watching, guys.